So today we're going to take the time to teach you everything you need to know about installing drywall. Um, how, why, what's to do, the right products, the right tools, the right materials. So first of all, let's just talk drywall turkey. Drywall, basically dust pressed between paper. You have two edges on drywall. You have the factory edge or the butt joint. And then you have the other edge, which is a tapered edge. I don't know, Max, if your camera can pick that up. But it rides a certain depth and then bloop, it has a little scoop here. And the idea being, when you put two of these taper joints together, all you need is one paper tape joint, a fill coat, and then a finished coat. Nice and simple, you always have a gorgeous joint. The more joints you can have that have the paper on them, the less work and the easier it is to finish. Every time you put two butt ends together, you've got to go through another step of uh, taping there. It takes another coat of application and it takes a little bit of trick. So you've got to have a lot more skill to do that kind of joint. Uh, fortunately for us, <clears throat> this room here, it's pretty small. So we're just going to go with all full sheets of drywall. This is 3 8 thick. This is half an inch. It adjusts the depth here. The idea is when you put two sheets together, you can tape that with only three steps. Nice and simple. When you have really long walls, drywall only comes 8s, 9s, 10s, 12s. If the wall is longer than 12, then you're going to have a joint. It's going to be a butt joint. And that takes a little bit more skill when it comes to the taping and how to finish that. We'll show you that soon. But for today, we'll talk about how to install this board. Now, this stuff's pretty flexible. It doesn't have a lot of strength to it. So you need to have enough support in behind the wall to hold this stuff. You can't just frame 24 inches on center and use regular drywall. You're better to go with a 16 inch. Um, so basically your tools are simple. You need a knife, you need a tape measure, you need a drill, Phillips bit. But where most people, and this is interesting, make the mistake. They go to the store and they buy their screws. And the box says drywall screws, so they grab it. But there's a lot of different lengths and there's two different threads. So what I want you to know is the fine thread screw is for metal stud framing, mostly for commercial. I don't recommend metal framing in your house. You wanna buy the coarse threaded screw. It's a wider thread, it'll grab wood better. The fine thread screw in wood does tend to end up popping out on you because it doesn't have a wide enough thread to really grab the wood. I see guys making this mistake all the time. Sometimes it's ignorance, sometimes it's laziness. Now here, you can buy your screws in all kinds of different lengths. The secret is this. You take the thickness of your drywall, half an inch. You multiply that by one and a half, that's three quarters of an inch. You add those two numbers together, that gives you the length of your screw. So remember, whatever you're screwing into, your screw has to be one and a half times longer in the material you're screwing into than what you're attaching to the wall. So you got a half inch material, you need an inch and a quarter. If you're installing type X or five eighths drywall, you got to go to one and five eighths. If you're installing two layers, you go to two inch. Some commercial applications, we can have screws up to two and a half inch. But use the right length of screw so that you're not accidentally screwing right into somebody else's wire. That's key. Electricians run their wiring at a certain depth of the wall to guarantee there won't be contact. If your screw's too long and you pierce a wire, you pay the electrician's bill. It's not his fault. So when it comes to cutting tools for your drywall, you really have three basic options. One is the knife, the standard. And when you're cutting drywall with the knife, really simple, you wanna just use the tip of the knife, cut the paper. It's just really delicate. You don't have to dig all the way in. If you get past the paper, you're gonna be cutting into that powder. It'll dull your blade so fast. And then it's dangerous, because a dull knife is the one that's gonna cut you. The other cutting tool I like to use is the Rotozip. Uh, mine has a little bit bigger nut on it here, so my, my bit is wider than usual. You just turn it on. I should mention, the reason this wall is up already is because we had spray foam in this building. So we wanted to cover that up for fire safety sake. So we have a window here. I'm just gonna cut the majority of this window out and demonstrate how this tool operates. Now it makes a little bit of dust. It has a nasty screeching sound. So people who don't like that nails on the chalkboard might bother you. There we go, daylight. This tool is incredibly effective around plug boxes because you can stick it in, run into the box, jump the other side, and then just follow the contour. Always use this tool counterclockwise, and then you'll have great success. Now, if you don't have a rotozip, the only other option is good old sweat, blood, and tears, using one of these little drywall saws. 
Uh, these can be real effective. The teeth are going two different directions, so be careful. If you cut yourself with this, you cannot stitch yourself back together. It'll be a nasty mess, and it'll take weeks to heal. So before you start your drywall installation, the basic process is your ceiling first, then the walls. There's no real science to it other than the fact that when you're doing your joints, if the wall board is pushed up again into the ceiling, it closes up the gap. It gets rid of all of those little errors that you have with the rooms being unsquare when you're cutting the wall. So you can have a little gap around the outside of the room. It'll cover with the walls and panels afterwards. It's not really supporting anything. We are screwing it to the ceiling after all. So what we want to do is inspect your ceiling before you close. You're looking for a few major things. Uh, one, let's go right up to the ceiling here, Max. One, your heat runs. Is there insulation between your wires and your heat runs? This is brutally important. In uh, our region, we have it in our electrical code that there must be insulation between the wire and heat sources as to not overheat the wires and cause fire. Secondly, make notes of where your light fixtures are, your smoke alarms, your heat runs. These are all things that you want to make sure that you take care of before you get started because we can use our Rotozip tool to cut around the boxes and all that sort of thing, but only once the fixtures are removed. So this light is in the way. Really simple. We know the power is off to this. All we gotta do is just back off the screws. And you could use a knife or a screwdriver um, sometimes I'll just cut the wires because there's lots of length here and I know electrician can wire this back up again for me, no problem. All right. So we're just going to pull that loose and we're going to pull this loose. All right. Always wrap these things up before you put them back in the box, just in case somebody hits that light switch by accident. Okay. So what we have here is an interconnected smoke alarm, CO2 alarm. You can tell it's interconnected because it has a ton of wires coming in and out of this bad boy. As soon as I take this off, it's gonna start making a horrible noise. So we're gonna wait until we're right ready to put the drywall up, just so we don't lose our sanity. So I'm just inspecting the ceiling, and I see I got a couple of nails sticking down. This isn't exactly a hammer, but it'll do the job. Okay, and we're missing one piece of strapping on the outside. So before we put up our ceiling, we gotta make sure we have strapping. The same we want to wood every 16 inches on a wall. You wanna have your strapping on your ceiling about the same. Now, it's very narrow, it's one by three is what I'm using. So usually when you're strapping, if you screw the middle, the strapping will dry out and twist a little bit. So what you wanna do is you wanna put two screws in, just to make sure you're getting both sides, so that twisting motion doesn't happen. And I'll alternate that every other strapping, and just go in the middle for simplicity. Um, because we dry, install our drywall contrary to the strapping, we're not concerned about whether it's perfectly on 16. Some guys I see, they try to make sure that their wood is perfectly centered so they can install their wood and on the joint. That's a lot of extra work. If you just measure off your room and put your drywall the opposite direction, it goes up a lot faster. So here's a rental tip for you. When you're screwing near the end of a piece of spruce like this, it's really thin. Start your bit, put the drill on reverse, and push, and see you see smoke. Did you see that, Max? When you see smoke, you've cauterized that wound. If you just drive a screw in a piece of strapping like this, it'll split on you. Now we're done, we're ready to install our drywall. Only thing left to do now is carry it down here from the truck. So let's go get our 10 foot sheets. No time to waste, time is money. Doo -doo -doo. That's a little treacherous. Max has got the camera rolling so that when we wipe out, not if, he has it on film. <laughs> so the system here, when you're putting up a ceiling, you need to remember that you're going to have a half inch drywall on either side coming up. So you've got lots of room there for variance. Uh, so instead of worrying about if the room is square or not, what we're going to do is we're going to take the actual measurement, take a half an inch off, and then when we install, we'll try to split the difference and the gap and put a quarter inch on each side. So our actual measurement is 118 and three quarters. So we'll install it 118 and a quarter. That's a 10 foot sheet of drywall. Well, let's go get that cut. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, but most importantly, comment on the videos. 
by all means, or a suggestion of video you'd like to see, let us know. We'd love to be in touch.